Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous videos, we've shown how to find the equation that describes the motion of a particle and the probability of finding a particle in an infinite well, a one-dimensional infinite well. So what we're going to do here is actually calculate the probability of finding a particle in a certain portion of that well from x equals zero to x equals one quarter the way from the left to the right side of the well. The wave equation that we derived for the particle in a one-dimensional well is as follows here, which came from a general concept of what the wave equation should look like. And now we're going to use that equation to find the probability, which means we're going to square this function because there's no um, imaginary part to it, otherwise we'd have to multiply it by its complex conjugate. And then we integrate it over the interval where we're interested in finding the probability of the particle, which means from zero to L over four, one quarter of the way from the left side of the well. So when we square this wave function, we get this right here, multiply times dx, and then we integrate from zero to L over four. We can take the constant outside the integral sign, so that gives us two over L times the integral of zero to L over four, times the sine squared of n pi x over l dx. Now to integrate the sine squared, we can use the trigonometric identity as follows. This is equal to 2 over l times 1 half, the integral of the quantity 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle, which would be 2 n pi x over l. So that's equal to one half the quantity, one minus the cosine of twice the angle. We integrate from zero to L over two, and of course we still have the dx. So now we have the integral in a way that we can actually integrate it. We'll separate it into two parts. So this is equal to, when we combine these two, we have one over L times, put a big bracket in, the first integral will simply be the integral over dx from zero to L over four and then we have minus the second integral. Now to integrate that, we're going to need a proper differential, which means we're going to need an L over two N pi times the cosine of two N pi X over L times the two N pi over L times DX. And actually I probably want to put the DX inside the parentheses here. So you can see that that's the proper differential. There we go. So now we have the proper differential we want to integrate. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so by multiplying times this, we also have, of course, divide by that. So now we're ready to integrate. And I still need my limits, 0 to L over 4. So our first integral here gives us 1 over L times and here we simply have x evaluated from 0 to L over 4. And uh, notice that this should also be L over 4, not L over 2. And then here we have minus L over 2n pi times the integral of this. Now when we integrate that, we get the integral of the cosine is the, let's say the derivative sine is the cosine, the integral of the cosine is the sine, so we put in the sine of 2 n pi x over L evaluated from 0 to L over 4. And then we close the brackets here. Let's see, we have this bracket closed and we have one more bracket over here. All right, keep track of all the brackets. So now we're going to go ahead and evaluate this. So the first one is easy to evaluate. That's simply L over 4 times 1 over L. So this becomes um, uh, 1 over L times L over 4, because when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Now notice here, when we plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0, so we don't have to worry about that. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the sine of L over 4. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course, remember that we let n equals 1. So over here, we're going to have to put a 1 in for n. And, ooh making all kinds of mistakes here. This should also be an n. There we go. Better. Now let's plug in the limits here. So we get minus L divided by 2 n pi times, plug in the upper limit, we get the sine of 2 n 
pi instead of x, we're going to write L over 4. And of course, we still have the L there. And of course, we plug in this, the lower limit, we get 0. There you go. Now we're almost there. Now let's do a little arithmetic here. So this is equal to 1 over L times L over 4. That gives me 1 fourth. And then we have minus L divided by 2n pi times 1 over L. So I guess that would be simply 1, because 1 over L times this, the L disappears. We get 1 over 2n pi. Here, the L's cancel out, and the 2 and the 4 becomes a 1 and a 2. N is 1, so we have pi divided by 2. The sine of pi divided by 2, well, that's uh, 90 degrees. So that would be 1. So that would be times 1. And so this therefore becomes equal to 1 over 4 minus, since n is 1, that would be 1 divided by 2 pi, which is 0 0.25 minus 1 over 2 pi. Of course, with a calculator, we can figure out what that is equal to. 0.25 minus the quantity 1 divided by 2 times pi equals, and I guess there's a probability of 0 0.0908. So the way we can interpret that is here that this is almost 10%, so we can say that it's about 10% probability we'll find the particle in the first quarter of the path from 0 to L. Since there's perfect symmetry here, we can expect that about 10% of probability of finding the particle from the third quarter to the very end of the well right here, and then about 80% probability of finding the particle in the middle from a, from a quarter L to three quarters L. And that's the way we can interpret our result. And that's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> you can't always say the same thing. <laughs>